I will never leave thee. No promise is a private interpretation. Whatever God has said to any one saint, he has said to all. When he opens a well for one, it is that all may drink. When he opens a granary door to give out food, there may be someone starving man who is the occasion of it being opened. But all hungry saints may come and feed too. Whether he gave the word to Abraham or to Moses matters not. Believer, he has given it to thee as one of the covenanted seed. There is not a high blessing too lofty for thee, nor a wide mercy too extensive for thee. Lift up now thine eyes to the north and to the south and to the east and the west, for all this is thine. Climb to Pisgah's top and view the utmost limit of the divine promise, for the land is all thine own. There is not a brook of living water which thou mayest not drink. If the land floweth with milk and honey, eat the honey and drink the milk, for both are thine. Be thou bold to believe, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. In this promise God gives his people everything. I will never leave thee. Then no attribute of God can cease to be engaged for us. Is he mighty? He will show himself strong on behalf of them that trust him. Is he love? Then his loving kindness will he have mercy upon us. Whatever attributes may compose the character of deity, every one of them to its fullest extent shall be engaged on our side. To put everything in one, there is nothing you can want. There is nothing you can ask for. There is nothing you can need in time or eternity. There is nothing living, nothing dying. There is nothing in this world, nothing in the next world. There is nothing now, nothing at the resurrection morning. Nothing in heaven which is not contained in this text. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Take up the cross and follow me. You have not the making of your own cross, although unbelief is a master carpenter at all cross-making, neither are you permitted to choose your own cross, although self-will would fain be lord and master. But your cross is prepared and appointed for you by divine love, and you are cheerfully to accept it. You are to take up the cross as your chosen badge and burden, and not to stand cavilling at it. This night Jesus bids you submit your shoulder to his easy yoke. Do not kick at it in petulance, or trample on it in vainglory, or fall under it in despair, or run away from it in fear, but take it up like a true follower of Jesus. Jesus was a cross-bearer. He leads the way in the path of sorrow. Surely you could not desire a better guide, and if he carried a cross, what nobler burden would you desire? The Via Crucis is the way of safety. Fear not to tread its thorny paths. Beloved, the cross is not made of feathers or lined with velvet. It is heavy and galling to disobedient shoulders, but it is not an iron cross, though your fears have painted it with iron colors. It is a wooden cross, and a man can carry it, for the man of sorrows tried the load. Take up your cross, and by the power of the Spirit of God, you will soon be so in love with it that like Moses you would not exchange the reproach of Christ for all the treasures of Egypt. Remember that Jesus carried it, and it will smell, smell sweetly. Remember that it will soon be followed by the crown, and the thought of the coming weight of glory will greatly lighten the present heaviness of trouble. The Lord helps you to bow your spirit in submission to the divine will ere you fall asleep this night, that waking with tomorrow's sun you may go forth to the day's cross with a holy and submissive spirit which becomes a follower of the crucified.